Hey, welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. Today we're gonna, uh, I think we're gonna make a bass jig, you know? Um, I'm like the world's worst bass fisherman, but it's a few things I know. Number one is bass live in deep cover. Number two, when uh, bass are in deep cover, you lose a lot of jigs. Uh, well, you only live once, as they, the kids say nowadays. And uh, I'm not exactly a rich man, so we need to come up with a way to make jigs for cheap. That's what we're going to do. So I think we're going to jump into Fusion 360 real quick. I know this is everybody's highlight of these things, but I'm going to try and explain it in an entertaining way, and uh, we'll see what happens. process is going to be about the same as we've done everything else here. Uh, I'll probably break this up into a series. The first video is probably going to be about uh, design of the mold itself. Second one will probably be the pouring of the mold and how the mold actually works. And then the third will be maybe how to cut skirts, skirting material, because we're going to pour our own skirts here. This is going to be a how to make a jig, bass jig, and it's not going to be how to use a do-it mold to pour a lead jig, because everybody does that. That's not what I'm looking for. We're designing a jig from scratch, and then we're going to try and fish with it uh probably not this year probably next year because uh we're already icing up but i think we can go through it on how we put it together and uh yeah we'll just go from there we've done it countless times on this channel fusion 360 here it is uh if you're not familiar with it it's just a cad program by autodesk if you're a hobbyist or a startup company that makes under $100,000 a year, you can use it for free without needing to license it because you're not making money off of it. We don't make money on this channel, so here we are. Fusion 360. Um, this is the final mold design. What I did with this jig is I wanted to make a jig from scratch. So I wanted to pick an e easy accessible hook, and I wanted to make a football head jig. Football head jigs are a little bit... Uh, well, they look like a football sideways. Um, the reason that they look like a football sideways, I don't know. Don't really care. All I know is that they're heavy, they sink down, and they get in the cover where largemouth bass like to hide. So uh, I figured I'd make a football jig. I'm calling this one the touchdown, obvious reasons. Uh, it's heavy, hits the ground really quick, really hard. So we're just on Cabela's here, Capelots, I call it. Usually pretty pricey, but they have a lot of stuff usually, so... Um, basically this is what we're kind of shooting for with this design. The football head is got kind of a pointy rounded area there, at least elongated one or the other, either pointy or elongated like an oval. And then it has this weed guard, which is a hard plastic that goes over the hook. Uh, this does a couple things. The first is it keeps all the weeds out. Uh, not all of them, obviously you'll get weeds that drape over this plastic portion, uh, that become stuck to the bait as you're going through, especially with the line there. That happens, but the main part is that any logs or anything really that would get stuck on the hook point, kind of the jig bounces around that. So it's really nice in cover having this weed guard. So that's kind of what we're trying to replicate with this. Normally what you do here, we're just on Tackle Warehouse. This is a do it mold for uh, the football head jig style. And you can see here, this is inverted upside down, but normally what you do is you pour in the lead, the hook with some hook size is in there, and then you pour lead around that it sets up. Then you can super glue the weed guard in place at a later time, usually after you paint it or you put a powder coat or something on there. And you can see this one's a little zoomed in there for where the weed guard actually sits. So that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, that's kind of what we're going for here. I would like something in the half ounce range, three eighths or half ounce, especially if you're fishing any current or something like on the upper Mississippi river. If you want to check out that video, you need uh, kind of heavier to sink down to the bottom. So that's what I'm going for here. About a half and a half an ounce to three eighths of an ounce in weight. That'll, that'll be pretty stout. I think and it'll sink down to the bottom. So what we're going to do is trying to design that in Fusion 360. I'll show you a little bit of how I went about doing that, uh, especially for my prototype mold. And uh, yeah, you can see there's two halves here. It's got a football shape to it. 
um, and then it has a, a portion for a weed guard. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm picking a hook size that I actually wanted to use for this and uh, it's a standard hook size which I will find out right now. Alright so the hook I chose for this was actually a Mustad 32 786 ultra point so it's a 60 degree bend hook which means it's got this hook right here and instead of coming straight across it actually comes out at 60 degrees from the shank uh, the reason i chose that is because it's a very popular hook you can get those do it molds that pour out football head jigs in this hook size so i figured that was a good starting point plus it's a lot it's a pretty big hook you know it's i think it's uh like a it's a four ot, so it's pretty large, you know, overall hook size. Thought that would be good. Plus, it's really hard a uh, shank. I do like mustad hooks quite a bit, so why not? Why not use it, right? So what I did then to start this whole process is I basically took a canvas. We'll find our canvas here. I took a canvas shot of my hook. So all I did was took a picture of it. I measured up essentially what the gap here from the gap of the hook was, took a measurement of that, and then I set my canvas with calibration to make it the size I wanted, so real life size, into uh, Fusion 360. So it's not too hard to do once you have your canvas. You just run a control points line down the center of the hook because I know this is the correct size. I just did a control point spline around there, and then all I did for that was pretty simple. I just did a pipe at the you know dimensions that would make it work. So like 1.2. Now let's go like 1.4. That fills up the canvas and there I have a body of a hook. Now that I have the hook into uh, Fusion 360 I can model around that. So then it's just a series of sketches you know. You do one sketch here in and around that hook you can remove the canvas if you want because now you have the base sketch so you do a sketch in there you say well I want it to be about that large you know I want it to come down here I want to have like a little keeper there you know so you're just modeling it up so I have that set up the way I want so I take these two profiles I come in I do a revolve around this axis so now we have the football head portion we'll do a new body then I come in here and I'm like oh I want you know I want it about like this something like that you know I don't know you know how this it's all about iterations right you do one thing did it work cool did it not work not cool fix it right so I just come in here this is gonna be for our skirt we're gonna want a silicone skirt on this jig so we need to have some way to keep it up there so this just bulges out a little bit to keep that skirt up towards the the top of the jig head so I'm gonna do another revolve here I'm just gonna select that I'm gonna go to a straight point and then there we go we got that so then we do a, a new body there. So now we have a head and we have a, a neck of the jig itself. And then we're going to come down here. We don't want this. We just want a little small point, right? So then a series of sketches to get that to a point. So then we want to cut off. We want to cut off the majority of this surrounding area. So what we can do is we make a little sketch here. You know, nothing too crazy but we make this little sketch here we do something like this then we bring that down to cut something like that then we have a small hook keep right something like that keep messing around with it until you get kind of where you want but then it's starting to build up into something that we would consider an actual jig so we have our collar here for the jig collar itself when the skirt's ready to come we have a small keep for the plastic and we have a general football head design so now it's time to make a mold box for it and mold box design has been on this channel quite a bit as well you different ways of going about it what I like to do is I essentially just take this body right here as it is I combine it so I just go to modify combine 
I say join all of those pieces together. Now this is one solid object. So now it's, I would consider it complete. It's ready to go as a sprue hole. It goes down into a body. Now what I have to do is cut this in half. So that's pretty simple to do. All you do is come in here, you create a sketch, you run a line, and then all you do is modify split body. Cuts that thing right in half in the center. So easy enough, right? So we have one half and the other half. I have the hook in there, but one half and the other half. There we go. Now we can start making our mold box. Now that we have it in two halves, because we did a split body, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off the back side of that, and we're going to make this front part of the mold. So I'm just going to click all the portions that I don't want to be part of this. I'm going to go in there, and I'm just going to do, you know, a symmetric press pull. It's going to pull everything out. Right? So now I have one side like that, and it's out. So then all I'm going to do is bring this down however far I want for my mold body. I'm going to go whatever. Negative three. I, I like negative three. It seems to be pretty stout. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a join. So that gives me the floor of my mold. I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to go to the border I created. I like three millimeters. Works nice. And I'm going to go to the edge of my sprue. Then I'm going to give myself about three millimeters. So that's at 13. I'm going to bring that up. I mean, so I'm going to go to the edge of my sprue hole. You can see there up in the upper corner right here. I'm going to go to that and then I'm going to go up like six. It seems to be good with the silicone, especially if you wanted to go to lead or something like that. I'm going to go up to six. So then I'm going to say join. That gives me a mold box, one half anyway, right on this side. So now it's just a simple operation of doing the same thing, just on the other side. So I'm just flipping over. I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut everything here. Press pull that one. Do a symmetric again. Cut all that stuff out. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to bring that three millimeters down. I'm going to join. And then I'm going to bring this one up 19 mi millimeters, 19 miles. <laughs> bring that one up 19 millimeters. So now we have two identical but mirrored bodies. So I'm just going to flip this over. And then I'm just going to do a point to point move, which can bring me over here. I'm going to go back to my free move. I'm going to bring this out, turn off these sketches. So in a nutshell, that's essentially how you make the mold. And that's how I made the mold the first time. Now what we haven't went over yet is how to add the weed guard. Okay, so now you might notice a little bit of difference here from my original prototype and the one I showed you. That's just because all I did was I ran, uh, just for to show you, I ran a sketch with just like this. I went like this and this, just a line, and then I made a pipe out of it before I split it in half. That's going to be our weed guard. The only way I really figured out how to do the angle on that was overlaying the sketch on a canvas from the do-it mold football weedless jig. So I just blew it up essentially in there as uh, I calibrated it to the size of that jig head and then I set the, the angle at which I wanted the weed guard. And it seemed to work out really, really well. Uh, the weed guard lines up correctly. So it was just kind of a shot in the dark, but it did work out really well. So that's the only difference there. You do that step at the same time you're modeling the rest uh, of the head and everything. If you put a pipe in there and then split it later after a join you end up just having this mold essentially which is you know what we were going after anyway so the next part of this is going to be how i pour this in the silicone itself and then we're actually going to pour jigs with this using shotgun shell 
uh, lead pellets and a two-part urethane, so similar to an epoxy, but a quick-setting plastic. So we're not going to be pouring these in lead at all. One of the main reasons for that is because with the the weed guard in the head, if we poured lead in that, it's going to burn the weed guard. Uh, I know, I've tried it. <laughs> but the other option is that it actually gets into that weed guard and holds it in there too. So the uh, two-part urethane and or epoxy pouring, you might have seen it on like marling baits. He likes to do that instead of pouring uh, hot lead in the molds too. Um, and it also really increases the longevity of your mold over time because you're not putting in really hot material in it. So yeah, I hope this was educational for you. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit of something. This probably isn't the best way of doing this, but it's my way of doing it and seems to work all right so far. So if uh, you have any insights into this or you got any ideas on how to make this a little bit more efficient, please let me know. Uh, I had, did not put index holes in here uh, just because it was so easy and quick to line it up that doesn't really matter. So, I mean, it'd be nice if they were in there, but it's not crucial. So, And then I also uh, made this jig mold after I knew it worked. I made three in a row on this and a larger mold because why not, right? If we know it works, might as well make it bigger. So that's always fun to do too. You can always replicate this really quickly in Fusion 360 because everything's there for you. So, all right. Well, hopefully you did enjoy it. Hopefully it was educational. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit of something. It is my way of doing it. So it's not perfect. It's not the right way. It's not the wrong way. It's just a way. So if you got any information about how to make it better, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I appreciate that. Look forward to everybody that comments on videos helps me out quite a bit learning and pushing through this so i think it's pretty exciting so stay tuned if that's something you're into maybe consider subscribing if you're not already maybe give it a like if it's uh something that you were into i would appreciate it that's kind of what we do here out of doors doing the old 3d printing and uh yeah so till the next time keep your amps up and your filament dry <laughs>